Good afternoon, Soul Family. Down at the Mermaid's Landing. I was gonna go out on the canoe, and then it started getting really hot, and it's been actually really, really cool all day today. It's one of the cooler days. It's supposed to be going up to 98. Not good. Um, so, let's see. We're gonna be talking about the gopher. We talked about the gopher recently, and gopher talks about boundaries being crossed. Hmm, I wonder if I should come here and work on it here. I have my stuff set up. The reason I talk about boundaries is because people have been crossing them big time, big time. Um, and when you cross another's boundaries, that isn't love, that is invading personal space. And I wanna show you something right now. You probably can't see it, but there's a red hawk there, which is me, <laughs> that's the messenger. And she's being bombarded by crows. Do you see that? I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're literally, bashing down on her. They're threatened by her. So you oftentimes see, can you see that over there by the palm tree? So there's one, how many are there? One, two, I'm gonna count because it might mean something specific. One, two, three, four, five, six crows and one red hawk. Okay, so six, the number six says, oh, and there's another seven, seven crows. Seven, you're on the right path and it will exceed your expectations. However, you're getting challenged because people are coming at you. So it's like when you're the light, oh, now there's eight. Eight says get, get moving, get moving light worker. You've got everything you need to get moving on your spiritual path, get going. But whenever we have things that others want, they attack you, right? They cross your boundaries. Now, they're, they feel threatened by you. When somebody feels threatened by you, that's when they start to gossip, that's when they start to attack, and that's what's going on here, and that's what's happened. And so our inclination is to go away, leave it alone, stop doing what it, whatever it is you're doing because you don't wanna deal with everybody coming at you, right? But Spirit says keep persevering. The Red Hawk is much stronger than the Crows. They're annoying more than anything. So you keep moving on your path, but, but get away from the drama, right? Stay away from the drama. The reason I actually brought up boundaries is because of this. And this is what a gopher does. And the gopher has come down here and completely torn up this beach. And the gopher is talking about boundaries. Somebody is invading your boundaries. Somebody's stepping over your space. Now, I've had, I, I was gonna uh, address it personally, but I won't address it personally because I'm not gonna give it my energy. I'll just talk about it in a general reading. Um, that sometimes people feel that they love somebody or that they should be with somebody or, um, they're showing attention. I just am watching this and they're, they're annoying as hell. And that Red Hawk is just cruising around and because they feel threatened by him or her, they just, they're relentless, right? And uh, you're just minding your own business, doing your work, right? And these people come and they wanna knock you off your platform or they wanna knock you off your pedestal or they feel like they love you. They feel like, you know, I'm doing this for your own good, but they're stepping over your personal space. They're stepping over your boundaries. And when you have a choice and you don't choose them and you cross over the boundaries and you keep pushing at it, you're invading their personal space. That isn't love. That's selfishness and it's wrong. So the groundhog and the red hawk is asking you today, have you invaded somebody's personal space? Now, maybe at this point, the red hawk has invaded, they feel the red hawk has come into their space because generally when a crow does that, they're trying to protect their home, right? their nest. So the red hawk has come in here because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a threat to them. So I'm thinking about, if you're an overprotective mother or father and there's somebody that's pulling, or, or, um, or you like somebody, here's a message, you like somebody and they move in and they're, they are shinier, stronger, more attractive, more appealing. And I don't mean just by looks, I just mean they, their overall persona. They, they're a threat to you. Now the Red Hawk is going away. So they, they got rid of the Red Hawk out of their, they, they were, they were uh, protecting their neighborhood, right? They're like, get out of my neighborhood. So Spirit says, stay away from the drama, get out of it. If you're hanging out with all this stuff and you're getting attacked and you're, 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 you're trying to stick in this environment, leave. The Red Hawk now left, and now there's two Red Hawks over here, right? Stick to your own kind, that's one message. <laughs> and there's a, there's a, there's a, a couple of mallards and a, and a female down there. Um, but they're, they're, they're the, same, the same type, soul family, right? Um, so get out of the drama. 
Uh, it was interesting because I said I was going to address it personally and then I thought yesterday, no, I'm not going to give you my energy because any energy that I give you in a negative way, that's feeding what you're doing. And it's kind of like some people get off on that. They like that. They like that push and pull. They like they, they want to fight. They don't want actually things to be copacetic and peaceful and, 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 and calm and, and happy. They like things stirred up. They want to they want to strike up some some angry aggressive energy out of you. So anything, anything that you say or do, to come at them or combat them or um, um, is basically putting fuel to the fire, right? It's putting it's putting gasoline on the fire. So get out of the drama. Spirit says, walk away from drama. Drama comes to your door. You don't want it. And for the ones who you think that you love somebody and you're overprotecting them and you're chasing everybody away, that's not your place. It's not your place. There's a time and the space, and if, if somebody is coming in and attacking you and, and hurting your family, that's one thing. But you don't chase off other people because you're jealous or because you want to overprotect what's what you what you want or what you want to keep to yourself. So there's all kinds of different ways to look at this. So are you overstepping somebody's boundaries or has somebody overstepped your boundaries? Is it time for you to, to, to set down the law and say enough is enough? Um, and, and I was going to do it yesterday. I was, and then I thought, no, you know, I asked spirit, what is the best thing to do? And one of them was, you know, persevere, keep moving forward. But the other one was, it's the same thing with a spoiled brat kid, right? Kids being a little brat, and I'm not going to sit there and argue with, a, with an infant. I'm not going to sit there and argue with a child. You're going to be going into the corner or into your room for a timeout, and, and I, I, I'm not going to, I'm an, I'm an adult. I'm thinking right now, the song that came on yesterday, uh, um, I Ain't No Hollaback Girl, right? I don't have, and I think I posted it this morning. We have far more important things to do, us awakened adults, than deal with your childish antics and your drama. So run along and play somewhere else, play your dirty little game somewhere else. I'm not gonna waste my energy because I have more important things that I need to address, like this reading. So that's how I'm gonna handle it. I'm going to, um, if anybody comes in, I'll, I'll put my boundaries up, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna feed you. I'm not gonna feed your ego because some people get off on that. And on a happy note, check this out. My friend Sandy came back, my, my soul sister Sandy, that is, that is soul family, came back from Jamaica and she brought me this, one love. So that's what we want, right? We want, and we want to hang out with our soul family, right? That, that Red Hawk said, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm not going to hang out with a bunch of you guys. You're, I'm done. I'm going to go up. I'm, and, and the Red Hawk went higher, right? So it's like rise above, right? Take the high road. But anyway, I wanted to show you my, I, I said that I, Sandy, I said, I'll be sporting that pretty soon. So I'm wearing it today. One love. Okay. So today, um, what else? We are going to work with the Divine Circus Oracle. I'll see if anything else comes up. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking I was going to bring my radio down here so that I could hear songs in between. Because I like that when I do my dailies. I get um, messages from Spirit with the songs that are playing. But I forgot. So we'll just use the peace and quiet of the day. Ooh, the mallards are on the move. We had a little clear fluffle last night. While I'm shuffling, I'll tell you. Um, our rescue cat, our $3,000 cat, that may be looking for... Uh, a new home because he definitely seems to want to be the only one and he's such a loving sweet beautiful boy he's like a baby but when he uh he came into the, my room last night and my other cats were sleeping and lily got up to go to the bathroom my little girl and she she didn't know he was there and, and he came out i guess from behind the couch and i didn't see what he did and so at the time i thought lily was being a bit and I think she was because I heard the word histrionics afterwards, like she's a drama queen. But she scared him. I mean, he scared her. And he scared her so bad that she had a conniption fit. She peed all over the floor, all over the hardwood floor in a puddle. She scared herself so bad her whole entire stomach was wet. She hissed and growled and spit and, and I mean, hit and, and could have, would have scratched if she had any claws. She just lost her mind. And I looked at him and he was just sitting there looking at her and I thought, oh, good God. So I took him, that was the end of that. I cleaned up her mess. I took him into the other room and I spent the night with him where he sleeps like a little angel. And then this morning, you know, he came out and Liger's, you know, making it clear that my, my big main coon, that he's the man of the house, you know, when this one's come in, mommy's brought in this freeloader that's, you know, she's trying to take care of. And um, Prince appears to be so sweet and docile and gentle, right? So Liger was growling and hissing and I got a squirt gun and I shot Liger. And I said, that's enough, stop. And I shouldn't have done that. 
because he's just defending his home, his territory, right? But when I, I did that, he got scared and he ran. And when he ran, Prince ran after him and attacked him and literally beat the shit out of Liger. Now, Liger's got a triple coat because he's a Maine Coon. So he didn't, you know, he didn't get his eyes, thank God. And that's with Prince's cone wrapped around his head from his surgery. And so I shot him with water and I broke it up and Liger was so upset and scared and I thought to myself, you know what? I brought him into Liger's home. It's not Liger's fault and he ran after him. So you wanna talk about defending territories, right? That's what those crows were doing. They were defending that Red Hawk, that territory. So you may feel like you are, well, I'm defending what's mine. Make sure that what you're defending is somebody that's actually trying to hurt you because I, I, you know, and, and Prince at first didn't look like he was an instigator. He looked like such a sweet innocent, right? But when Liger ran, I don't know if that just brought out you know, the chase, you know, the, the, what is it called? Um, fight or flight in him that he just thought, but he ran after Liger. Liger didn't run after him. So now he's isolated, right? Liger and Lily have the run of the house and he's isolated because he's at a, that wasn't cool. So we gotta think about that, you know? Maybe you think that you're doing something, maybe you think that you're defending something, and maybe it's not yours to defend. And you come across as the aggressor. So let's see what Spirit has to say for us as far as our readings. And let's say, should we ask for what is the overall theme? No, they said no. We're just going to let it roll, and we're just going to let it be what it is. Okay, so this is our card. I keep talking about how, why is it that we continually get the same messages, but we do. So here we are again with the sacred fool. So the sacred fool, um, let's put this up here so it doesn't go because the wind's going to start any second and I can just see it taking off. So the sacred fool, the first thing I notice are the three um, peaks on his, on his, what is that? Clown's hat, right? three of them. So full circle, completion, first thing that comes to me. Second thing is Ascended Masters. Um, so, so the Fool, I think about the Fool and in tarot and the Fool is, is um, taking a leap of faith, um, innocence moving forward. Um, it's also the court gesture that was supposed to lighten up everything, right? Lighten up the energy. So this is a sacred Fool. So they're telling you to have to be brave, take the leap, right? But this is about being brave enough, trusting enough to make a choice that to other people might seem foolish. Because when you look at the, the card, the, the fool card in tarot, it's either a girl or a guy, and, and they're happily walking off the side of a cliff, right? They have their, usually they have their arms flung, flung back and their head, flung, you know, their head flung back. They're not looking, usually barefoot, little dogs running after them, and they're just going to take a flying leap off the side of a cliff. Well, that's foolish, you would think, right? But that's how some, what Spirit's talking about right now. It's about taking, it's a sacred leap of faith. So this is about making a choice that might seem crazy, illogical, unreasonable, and straight up foolish. You are a fool if you do this. That's what it's talking about. But you need to free yourself from that and be brave enough and trusting enough to make that choice, even if other people feel this way, because this is spirit asking this of you. When spirit says take a leap of faith, you're supposed to be unafraid. You're supposed to take a risk and step away from what is logical, what sensible people would do. You are a sacred fool. So there's one thing for us to be sensible i think about my i think about my grandma my grandmother was always a grandma like she's she was an older mother for my mom so she always wore and i'm looking at a giant blue heron going across a lake right now and i know i always want to turn around and i want you guys to see them because they're so big there it is going in for a landing but for you i know it's just little anyway my grandmother she always wore sensible shoes <laughs> she wore sensible shoes a gray, sensible jacket. Everything was sensible, nothing frivolous, right? So there's one thing about being sensible and grounded when it comes to your spiritual life, right? But if you want to live, if you want to be an original, if you want to be the, the blue heron that just went flying across the lake, 
That's the jack of all trades. That's the master of none. That's the one who dances to his own beat. That's the one who freaking jumps off a cliff when spirit says. That's the one who sees opportunities that others don't see. See, they're looking at it and they're saying, you're a fool. What are you doing? Are you nuts? And you're like, no, but you don't understand. I have a vision. I've seen this. I know what I can do with this. Not only have I seen the opportunity, I know how to grab onto it and I know how to make something of it. I'm not a fool. You might consider it foolish, but, but I'm following my spiritual path and I'm listening to my higher self. I am a blue heron person. I am a white crane. I am a snowy egret. That is what we are. We are the eclectic ones, the eccentric ones, the wild ones, the ones who dare to be different, the ones who dare to dance to a different beat, right? We are the Eiffel Towers that, that, the, that the norm wants to, seeks to put a, to a, a, a plastic bag upon and, and put a gag upon, right? They want, us, they want to tell us that we're foolish. But, but Spirit says, we don't want you to listen to that. Some people are going to call you stupid. They're going to call you the fool. They're going to say you're delusional. You are, you're out of your freaking mind. You're, what are you following this path? Why are you following this spiritual journey? It's not, it's not getting you what you want. You know, look what I'm doing. I'm making all kinds of money. I'm going to the river. I'm got, I've got a big house. I've got all this going on. I'm looking at the, the swallow, which is a harbinger of hope right there. White by, and it's white, which is purity. Flew by right at this moment. So they're telling you that, you know, you got to stop this. This is a foolish game, foolish game that you're playing and, and you're going to lose big time. But Spirit says, don't listen to those voices. They want you to tune them out. They want you, those, those were probably the crows. Those were dive bombing you. Those were the naysayers. Those are the, the birds that are chattering in your ear saying, you're nuts. You don't want to do this. You're crazy to do this. And you stuck around and you were listening. You were listening to them. And maybe for a while you got kind of sucked into them like that crow red hawk did. And then the red hawk was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm going and I'm following my spiritual path. I'm rising higher. I'm not going to come to your level. I'm not going to stay amongst this and fight with you or gossip with you or listen to your negativity and, and, and be soured by your toxic energy. I'm going to fly higher to spirit. And right as I said that, a wish went by. So make a wish right now. We get to make a wish. Hold on. I'm going to put you guys down for a second. I'm going to let you look out because... My lips are chapped and I'm putting lip gloss on and yes I am and that's just what I'm doing. I'll keep talking while I try and get this thing to, this thing doesn't want to release the lip gloss. So Spirit says basically don't listen to these people because they're, you're not the fool. They don't understand your wisdom. You know what's interesting is in the courthouse, I mean in the, in the court of the king, right, in the court. Is it called the court? It's called court when you come to court with the, um, with the king and the queen and, you know, and the fool comes out and the fool comes out to, to, to perform their tricks. The, the king would ask the fool when he wanted to know the answer to something that was very serious. He wanted the, he wanted the truth. It wasn't like he was um, looking at the fool as a wise man. He wanted the truth about something. So he, would ask, he wouldn't even ask his trusted advisors. He asked the fool because the fool didn't the fool didn't have like the gift of gab, didn't have that, the slip of the tongue. The king's no fool. The king knows that, that the people that work for him, he, he knows that, they, that they, they're trying to line their pockets. He knows that they want something. He knows that they're going to kiss up, right? They're going to kiss his ass, tell him what he wants to hear. He knows that they're going to want a favorable report. So they're not going to tell him the straight up honest truth. Whereas the fool is just going to tell him it straight as it is. So that's another message. And, and, and it's very a good message for me because um, and for other readers um, and for, for you, uh, for you, when somebody asks for honesty on your on your part. When I do a reading, I don't do fluffy readings. I give you what spirit tells me. And sometimes you don't want to hear what spirit has to say, but it's not my message. And when spirit's telling you here to do something right, they're asking you to take this this leap. You need to do what they want you to do. This is about being truthful. This is about being honest. This is about doing what spirit wants you to do, even if it feels inconvenient, even if it feels scary, even if it feels like there might, might be retribution for speaking up, for speaking your truth, for, for doing what spirit asks. I'm watching that, um, the swallow, and it's so incredibly beautiful. When, when the light, can you see in the light shining on it? Oh, it's so gorgeous. I don't know. If, Hopefully she'll come up closer, but with the light shining on her like that, that's what spirit wants us to do. Be the light. And sometimes when you're the light, you attract negative things. You attract stalkers. I have. You attract people that are, you know, out to get something from you. You do. 
When you're flying high, when you're in your, in your um, it's kind of like if you win the Reader's Digest sweepstakes or like the lottery. Those poor people, they get all this money, right? But then they've got all these people chasing them. Somebody wants something from them. Everybody's after something, right? It's kind of like the king. That's why he asks the fool because he knows that they're not going to tell him the truth. They want to tell him what he wants to hear. They want, they want praise or they want something. But you are going to attract the negative, but that's why you need to shine high shine and fly higher you need to be aware that it's going to happen sometimes it's not convenient sometimes it's not fun sometimes it's scary but when this when the fool comes forward there's something is there's something coming for you that this is this that's why we're getting this because something's gonna come and you're gonna feel like I don't know if I want to do this. This is scary for me. And, and if you were to ask other people, they're going to think you're crazy. Um, and you might even think this isn't logical for me to behave this way. But we're getting this ahead of time because there is about to be something that's going to, it's going to test you. Because something might come that's going to, it could either turn your world upside down. Well, it's going to turn your world upside down. It's going to turn your world upside down either in the negative or the positive, but it's going to turn your world upside down. And the only way you're going to win what it is, is if you take the risk. So Spirit's basically saying at this time, there she is again, the beauty. They don't, they're not going to advise you to do something that's going to turn your world upside down and hurt you. It feels like that to you. And, it, and other people are going to say that. The crows were telling the, the Red Hawk that. Okay? Spirit's not going to lead you in a direction that's going to hurt you. Spirit knows that if you stay in the light and you do what's asked of you, you're going to prosper. So there's something that's going to rock your world in a positive way if you have the guts to do it. If you can be the fool, if you don't listen to the naysayers, if you take that risk and take a chance and forget what other people think, because what's here for you is something amazing. Stop worrying about what everybody else says. Right? So in order to help yourself do this, they want you to, maybe that's why I dealt with this cat. Everybody said, you're crazy. Why are you doing this? Right? He clawed me. He, he hurt me. It cost us almost $3,000. He attacked my cat. He's peeing in the house. And people are like, why are you doing this? The crows are saying, and, and even my landlord, why would you spend the money on an animal like that? Why didn't you just put him to sleep? Right? But spirit told me to do this. And they said, are you willing to, do the, to put in the work that is going to be required of, of this situation? And I said, yes. So there's the same situation that's going on. My hair is driving me nuts. I know you don't care, but it's bugging me. You know women, their hair. Ugh. Anyway, um... So what you're going to do is spirit wants you to do something that you wouldn't normally do like that. You know, that was a crazy thing to do. And I, and we're struggling through it. And I've had countless amounts of sleepless nights and worry and, and, uh, on and on it goes, but I was advised to do it. There's a reason there's going to be a huge blessing, right? There is already a blessing. We saved a life, but, um, it's also brought family together, spiritual family. And maybe it's been a witness to show other people how soul family steps up because it sure, sure, sure did for me. It sure made it clear to me who my friends were and they weren't my physical family. They were my soul family. So there's reasons for everything to happen. So spirit wants you to do something. You don't have to go rescue a $3,000 cat. You know, it's going to cost you $3,000, but do something you wouldn't normally do. Like get up at karaoke and sing, um, post a video on YouTube. Take your sunglasses off and let everybody see the wrinkles under your eyes and the bags under your eyes from lack of sleep, right? You don't understand how big of a deal that is for me. That's a big deal for me to do because I'm very self-conscious. <laughs> um, and I shouldn't be, but I am. What else could you do? Go for a walk at night? No, I don't want to tell you to do that, even though I do it all the time. Um, what could you do that, 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 that you wouldn't normally do? Speak up. Speak up and ask somebody out that you're, that you're intimidated by. Invite somebody to go do something with you. That's a really cool thing, actually. Is there somebody that, that you have, have maybe on Facebook that you have connected with or somebody that you've connected with and you like them, like a friend, just a friend, and you think, you know, they're always doing cool things. Contact them. Invite them to go do something. And you're normally shy and you normally don't do that you might find yourself meeting a new friend, right? Because I did that when I was, um, I was 16 and I was Jehovah's Witness at the time and we went to an assembly. We would have these assemblies, you know, every six months at these, um, I think, where was ours? It was at the Shriners Auditorium in, um, Crow. It was at a, the Shriners Auditorium in 
Poway, California. I think that's where it was. And I had missed my assembly. So I had gone with a friend of mine, an, an older friend of mine, and I met, actually I hadn't met this person. I saw this person. God, this is reminding me of the day that my twin and I met. It's interesting. He was with his older friend. But I went and I saw this girl sitting across the auditorium. And I, and I thought, you know what? And I, and I looked at her and, and I liked the way she looked. She dressed like me. Um, and I just thought to myself, I want to be her friend. I want to be her friend. She looks like me. She kind of reminded me of me, you know? And I asked my friend, how old is she? And she said, I think she was like six months older than me. And I said, um, I want to meet her. And I didn't normally do things like that, especially with girls, you know? I, I, never, had a, I never had much success for, with women or girls when I was young because there was a lot of jealousy and, and um, they always thought I was after their boyfriends and I wasn't, but it was awkward and I never did well. And I always told myself I don't do well with girls, which meant I didn't do well with them because I believed that. So I said, could you take me over and introduce me to her? And she took me over there and introduced me. And that day she became my best friend from that moment on. We, did, we were inseparable for years, for years. And what was interesting is I thought she was so beautiful. I've always thought she was the most beautiful girl. Whoa, hold on, I almost closed my screen there. There we go. I thought, it's, I keep trying to close my screen. I don't know why. Hmm. Um, and she didn't have any friends. She said, nobody approaches me. Nobody wants to be my friend. They feel threatened by me. They, they just, thank you for coming up. So here I was, in, I was insecure, and I always thought, God, she was so beautiful. And years later, she told me she thought that of me, right? And I thought, damn. So we look at other people. People are always so worried about, uh, uh, we're always worried about ourselves. We don't realize that other people are worried about themselves. So do that. Why did the light go off in dark and light? Did you see that, how it's going dark and light, dark and light? See that? So weird. Anyway, so do something like that. I ended up getting a friend. And here that person didn't have anyone to do anything with. She said she was so lonely. She was dying for somebody to do something with because she had nobody like her. I want somebody like me. I, I want spiritual people. So anybody that's in, here's me doing it. Anybody in this, in this area, I live in Canyon Lake, California. Um, I'm looking for a spiritual friend. I am because I got nobody to do anything with. And, you know, we may not click with everybody because just because they're spiritual people, but you never know, right? So spirit wants you to try something like that. Put yourself in a position where you would not normally put yourself and that's, that's going to get you used to when this next thing that comes up that you, you, you're going to have to do, you're going to be a little bit more capable or, or, or used to doing that. You're, you're going to be willing to listen to what your inner voice is telling you that you should do. So for an affirmation, what you're going to say, you're going to look at that, look at that sacred fool and you're going to say, sacred fool, set me free to live as I need to be wildly and divinely me. I like that. I like that wildly. <laughs> I'm wild and I like it. Wild is good, right? Okay, I'm gonna put you guys down. That's our first message while I shuffle and get our next message. Correct for neutrality. Now, she and I didn't end up staying friends. She ended up, uh, but, 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 it, but for years I, I had her there. And, and everybody, you know, is in our life for, for a time and for a space and for a reason, right? And she was there for a reason at the time. And we grew apart and, you know, things happened and, and we aren't friends anymore but you know she was there when I needed somebody and maybe that's the same situation with you okay correct for and I'm getting right now that maybe that was the case maybe you have been around somebody that w was there for a reason for a time for a lesson and maybe now you need to get away I'm thinking about that right now I'm thinking about that crow that the crow being um, the crows attacking the red hawk that Red Hawk may have been part of that crowd for a while, but, but wasn't the same as them. Served a purpose, you learned a lesson, and now you've recognized that you need to get out of there. That's a message too. Okay, correct for neutrality. Hold on, let me get a drink of my Chia water. Look at the white crane going across the water right now. Ooh, come up to us, yes. You gonna land on the boathouse? Aren't they beautiful? Wow, they're so beautiful. You know, they call them the jack of all trades, master of none. They, they laugh at them. They think they're weird. They think they're eclectic. They think they're like the ugly duckling, but aren't they glorious? You see a bird like that fly by and you don't say that's ugly. You say that's a magnificent creature. So 
don't pay attention to what other people are saying. When they come from a negative mindset like that, they're probably jealous. Because they don't want to do the work. And they see you being successful. They've seen you take an opportunity, take a leap of faith. They've seen you take a leap of faith, dive into an opportunity and make something amazing at it. And they're pissed off because they didn't want to do the work. They're the ones that want to ride on your coattails for free, right? And you didn't listen to them and you've made something amazing of yourself and now they're jealous. No one has a reason for jealousy. That is all ego and you can do the work too. And you can bring it to you as well. Okay. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Correct for neutrality on all levels. We got the barn swallows going by right now as well. They're so beautiful. The colors of the barn swallows are just incredible. Sapphire blue and like a really rich, um, kind of like a, what is the word? Like a redwood brown. Oh, they're just gorgeous colors. And their little fan tails, I love them. Love them. So hope is in the air. Don't lose hope. Correct for neutrality on all levels. What is the next message? It's very important for us at this time. The wind is blowing. Okay, so it's this one. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. You heard me shuffling. We got it again. The sacred fool. So this is just emphasis again. Don't be afraid to take the leap of faith. You're not a fool. They are. Don't miss the opportunity. It's coming. Remember this. Please remember this. Please remember that people are going to be laughing at you. People are going to be telling you that you're stupid, that you don't know what you're doing, that you're going to regret this. But the king trusts you. The king trusts you of all people. Don't be concerned with what they think. Recognize that you are in a place of honor. And that is why this opportunity is coming to you because you are respected by spirit. I like that. Think about that. It's very important. Spirit respects you. You've done your hard work. And the opportunity that's coming may be disguised in other people's eyes. Please do not allow the naysayers to strip you of what you are deserving. Don't let your own negative fear and mindset and past behavior patterns and thoughts get in your way. Ask spirit to help you see the light in the situation. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Give us a new one, will ya? Come on. Ah, we've had her before too. <laughs> the Red Countess. All right. All right already. All right already. If you guys want to insist on giving us the same ones again and again, who am I to tell you what to do? Well, the first thing I notice are the two hummingbirds. To me, they're hummingbirds. They may be a different kind of bird, but I see hummingbirds because of the colors. So the hummingbirds say, you will accomplish what may seem impossible to yourself and others. And the red looks like passion. And she's the one hummingbird on her left shoulder is coming with a little bobble in its mouth. So, think. I'm just gonna think. Okay, she looks like she's been crying. Her nose is red. Okay, so I'm like thinking about the birds and I'm thinking about the crows. And I'm thinking about the fact that the cat bird, my, my client talked about the cat bird, was one of the note totems that came up recently. And it was talking about catty people gossiping, nattering, nattering in your ear, right? Tweeting. So I'm thinking tweeting, birds. So when I look at this, this is gossip. Tweeting, this is Instagram, this is Twitter, this is Facebook, this is distraction, this is noise. This is people nattering in your ear. A lot of distraction. So spirit wants you to, as with the crows, focus on me. Spirit says, focus on me, focus on the light. Tune out these. If you go into your highest self, you'll tune out the distraction because what did we say? A true master, oops, let me get the, the light here. 
It's so bizarre. A true master is able to find peace in the midst of chaos. Because you, you, when you tune into your highest self and you tune into spirit, you're able to, the, other, the white noise just kind of disappears. It's kind of like with me. I like to sleep with a rain machine. To other people, that's noise. To me, it's white noise, and it lulls me to sleep. So they want you to avoid, ignore what, what the, what the na naysayers and the natterers are saying to you, and they want you to listen to what the truth is, that you, something that you already know. You already know this. Others don't see it the way you do, but you've sensed it, you've heard it, you've realized it. You know this truth. And you've known it for a long time and more than once. So she's reminding you that no matter how badly they try, how much they try to convince you out of what you know deep inside and what spirit has shown you and what your higher self and your heart has said, no matter how hard they try, don't let them talk you out of it. They might convince you somehow for a little while to follow along with them. But, or maybe it's the truth that needs to come out. Don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. Because spirit is telling us they want us to speak. They've been telling us that for quite a while. They want something to happen. And these ones are telling her not to do it. She looks a little apprehensive. They might even entice you. If you don't, we'll give you this. Don't say anything. You know, it's like a payoff. But the truth is gonna come out eventually. So this is not about warning you like um, you're going to be in trouble. This is, this, is, this is a promise. We kept getting the, 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 the hope, the bird of hope going by, right? We saw the, the red hawk was the messenger, and, and, the, and the, the crows were trying to stop the red hawk from doing what it was supposed to do, speak its truth. Don't allow that to happen. This is not to say that you're in trouble. This is to remind you of your strength. This is to remind you of what you need to do. This is to encourage you to be bold like her red hair. Act on what you need to do and what you feel you should. This is reassurance for you. This is about holding your head high. This is, an, this is about you trusting your own inner voice and your own inner truth and spirit's guidance. Also, trusting yourself. In order, remember, the, the, the crane is capable of seeing an opportunity and making something of it. You know what you can do. You know you have the, you have the wherewithal to, 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 to complete this task. To do, you won't be able to do this, whatever this is. You won't be able to live on your own. You won't be able to... I've had somebody say that they've been told that they can't live on their own. They've been told their whole life they can't do this without their family. And that's not what I got from spirit. You won't be able to run your own organization, your own company, right? You won't be able to make success out of that project. You're not going to be able to... Whatever it is that they're telling you that you can't do. You can't do this without us. You can't do this. You won't be able to do this. Spirit's saying they want you to have courage and they want you to have passion for whatever it is. And they want you to speak your truth. It's the color of blue. Speak your truth and recognize that you have the ability because Spirit says there's something coming to us. And it wouldn't come to us if we weren't capable because the number of crows ended up being eight. Get to work, like, get to work, light worker. Stop procrastinating. You have everything that you need right now. All the prerequisites are here in place in order to do what it is that you need to do at this time. That's what they are saying. And Spirit is saying this as well. So know that you can act on what you feel and what you think. And, what, and, and you don't have to worry about what other people are saying. And you don't have to worry if you can't do it. So if you're having a difficult time, maybe you are, like, look at her. Is she confused? I don't even know, you know? I'm thinking about the one on this shoulder is saying this, and this one's up here saying this, and I, you know, I've got my own insecurities, and I, I don't even really know at this point what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm conflicted. I'm torn. My heart says one thing, but my head's telling me something else. So Spirit says go out here. Take a break. Take a deep breath. Clear your head. Don't think about it for a while. Just let it go. Just relax. Allow, allow yourself to just decompress. Calm down. Her hair's all in a knot, right? Let your hair down. Let your hair down. Let the wind rush through your hair. I'm going to freaking take my sweater off. I'm hot. You know, maybe things are, maybe you're all hot and bothered about something. Hold on, I'm going to put this down because i got to take my sweater off. I can't even freaking move. So maybe you're all hot and bothered by this. You know, you're all up in, a, up, up in an uproar. You, 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 that's what happened like this morning when the cat attacked my cat and, and there was urine everywhere and, and then Liger got, got upset and, and Liger or Lily, one of the two, went and peed on my red leather couch and I was just like, oh my God. You know, 
And my landlord comes in and he goes, you know what, if you want to just take off today and I'll take care of these guys, you know, just so that you can relax. You've been going through a lot and you haven't had a lot of sleep. And, uh, and it's true. <laughs> and I was hot. I'm sitting down here and I'm hot and bothered, right? And when you get hot and bothered and things are, are, are like that, you're not going to see straight. You're not going to think straight. So get outside, relax, calm down. Don't think about it for a while. Go out and have some fun and then just kind of allow. And then spirit will bring you the information that you need. And they come to you in an animal messenger. It may just come when you've had time to relax. Okay? I'm going to put you guys down again for a second because uh, i got to stretch. Um, so it's interesting because... Hold on. I'm just I'm trying to get my hair off my back. There we go. Okay. My hair is really long and it's like wearing a coat. <laughs> it's like it's really heavy. So right now what was happening? I was getting overheated, right? I was getting overheated. And I was thinking yesterday about my vacuum. I've got this really powerful vacuum. And my cats are, are afraid of it. Prince is afraid of it, Liger, they're both afraid of it. They both ran from the vacuum and went to the same spot uh, undercover, not worrying about each other anymore. They just wanted to get away from the vacuum that they were terrified of, this purple vacuum. Purple is the highest spiritual color, right? And I'm driving around this vacuum in the house and, it's, and, and this vacuum is so powerful. It's loud as hell, but it's really powerful. So I'm thinking about me doing this. I'm thinking about you. If you have to be a, 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 mo a voice, like a mouthpiece to something and spirits asking you to speak up or act, right? This person's got red hair. This is noticeable. This is making yourself known, right? I may be saying things that people don't want to hear and I'm speaking loudly and I'm, and I'm bringing it out. I'm a very powerful force, this vacuum that scares people. Vacuuming is cleaning up things that are, the, you know, cleaning up the dirt, this, which is by spreading the light, which is by sending out the information that we need to send out, right? However, my vacuum doesn't stop unless you unplug it. <laughs> it doesn't stop. So it's like, it's like me. I'm very powerful. I've got a lot of powerful um, abilities and I'm very connected to spirit, but I go 24 seven. I work all the time. And I was thinking about this, about, you know, you're getting hot and bothered, you're hot or whatever. And you think the same thing about my phone. My phone, I had to get a new phone because why? Because it was overheating. Why? because it, was, it wasn't able to cool down. So things need to cool down. So unplug, unplug from whatever it is that's going on. If it's hot and bothered around you, if, there's, if there's, it's steamy and hot or drama all around you, get away from it, detach. If you, your mind is going crazy and you're getting all, all hysterical and all hot and bothered, go to separate corners. It's kind of like Lily this morning, right? She, or she, she had a conniption fit, so she had to go in one room and Prince had to go in a different room. So it's about, removing yourself away from whatever it is that, that's chaotic and hot and busy and crazy. So if it's just your mind that's crazy, I can't hear my, my, what my heart is truly saying because I'm overwhelmed, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I've got everything going sideways. You probably could tell by my post this morning, if you watched, they weren't very funny. They were all about cat posts and I'm like, yeah, it's great when they come and pee on your $3,000 couch, you know, the only thing that you have left of your mother. I'm just tired of it, you know? And it was like, you get to the place where you're just tired, you're, you're burnt out, you know? So you need to unplug. So. You may not be able to hear spirit right now. We've got a big bird flying above us and I don't, I don't know where it went. <laughs> I don't know where it went. I wanna see what it is because it's gonna be a message. Um, so the first step is to, is to cool down, right? Get yourself away from the drama. Um, take your, unplug maybe emotionally, energetically, physically. Stop working. Take yourself somewhere where it's peaceful and calm. That little swallow had a bird in its mouth, a little tiny, I mean a bird, a fish, a little tiny fish in its mouth. So it went into the light, it was shining light, and it got what it was going after. It didn't stop. Remember Spirit said, go up into the light, shine your light, and you'll get what is yours, what you deserve. So that's what the, the Countess is saying. She's asking you that right now, maybe you've just got a lot going on. Maybe all this is your own thoughts nattering going around and around and it's making you all hot and bothered under the you know you can't even hear yourself think so it's a good time to unplug give yourself some time out your hair is all in a knot everything's crazy maybe you're a hothead maybe maybe you like to me like me this morning i was pissed off in the middle of the night i'm like scrubbing the floor that was bad enough you know i was okay then but then when i when i come in this morning and and find out that my cats have now destroyed my leather couch i was mad and i said to everyone i'm mad at all of you I'm mad at all of you. And I said yesterday, you know, I put a post up and it's okay to be angry. 
It's not okay to be cruel. So I'm sitting there and I'm giving Prince lovies. I didn't hit any one of my cats. You know, they're cats. They're doing what they naturally do. They're defending their territory, you know? And so I'm not going to be angry at, at them, but I was angry. And I said, I'm mad at everybody right now. I said, I, I, you know, I don't like any of you right now. I love you, but I don't like anybody right now. So I need to have you behave and I need some space to myself and I'm going to give myself a nap and blah, blah, blah. So that's what you need to do, right? Decompress. It's not okay for you to be a hothead and lose your, lose your cool with other people and be nasty. So there is another message from the Countess and she's telling you that if there is somebody that you don't trust or that you're somebody that you're feeling uneasy about, this is your sign. Here's your sign, you're right, you're right. I was wondering about if there's somebody that I should be cautious of because I, something smells wrong, something just doesn't smell right. I, I don't trust something. Now that's what I said with Prince this morning. Something didn't smell right, all right. There was urine in my house. Somebody went and sprayed and marked their territory. However, I thought that I was mad at my cats, but then I watched this little seemingly innocent one that, that's, that, that came in, this one that I was trying to help, and found out that that one had stirred everything up. I watched, finally. I was able to be seen in front of my own eyes. That one wasn't so innocent. He was stirring up the shit. He ran after Liger, and he attacked Liger. So sometimes... We need to make sure that we're getting the story straight because we may only be seeing the cursor outside. Um, you know, somebody may be coming back, uh, retaliating or, or responding to something and you haven't seen the other side of it. So if there's somebody that you're wondering about, I mean, I'm getting a bad feeling about this person. Spirit is confirming your insight. They want you to trust yourself and they want you to act on what you feel. So an affirmation for you that you can, an affirmation, oh, that's a beautiful view. Look at it that way. An affirmation that you can say, I release all vows of silence made in this or any lifetime. I release all shame and fear of my intuition and insight from this or any lifetime. I release all memory and effect of being silenced, judged or harmed for insight and knowledge that I have held in this or any lifetime. I choose to see, know and trust in my inner knowing. Through my own free will and divine grace, this is now so. My inner knowing, my wise inner voice, my guide, I hear you whisper your loving truths deep inside and I trust you, and I act on the guidance, at your guidance at the perfect time in the perfect way. Because you knew something was off. You knew that you were supposed to speak up. You knew that the something smelled fishy here. Something doesn't smell right, and you know it. And so Spirit's telling you, you need to pay attention to your highest self. And if you need to give yourself an affirmation like that, maybe you did come from a past life where you were to be seen and not heard. Maybe you were a monk and you had no tongue. You weren't able to speak. It's like there's a song, lipstick on my teeth. There's a song, that's not the name of it. That would be a good song, lipstick on my teeth. Women know it, we know it well. <laughs> um, the song is, you, 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 cut my, you cut out my tongue and then you, for, then you force me to speak or ask me to speak. You, and so basically it's like, you're being, um, it's kind of, how, how do I get that across? You know you need to speak up and they're telling you you need to be silent. They, they took your, they slit your tongue, but you need to speak. So it could be that situation going on. It could be somebody, okay, here's this. Somebody comes to you with gossip, but they tell you something that's very, very, something that needs to be said. But if you repeat it, but they say, don't say anything, don't say anything. They've come to you and they've said something to you, but then you're not allowed to say anything about it. Well, they've just unloaded on you and you're being told to be quiet. I'm sorry. I'll tell you that that friend that I went and made that day, that's why we're not friends anymore. She came to me and told me something about a mutual friend that our friend was cheating on her husband. And we were all friends, the girls and I, all the girls were. Actually, the guys were too. And I said, you need to tell him or you need to tell her that, that you're going to have to tell him. And she said, no, no, no. But she told me. But this was one of my best friends. And I said, so I went to my dad and I asked my dad, now here, check it out. There is the, there goes the blue heron going across the water. Oh, you just missed it. Um, I went to my dad and I said, I don't know what to, what to do. And I told him the situation. I said, I don't know if it's the truth. And he said, she's your friend. You need to go to her and you need to say, this is what I was told. And if this is the truth, you need to either stop this or you need to talk to your husband or I will. So I went to my friend and I said, look, 
something was said to me and it was really upsetting and, and I needed to ask, I needed to tell you what I, what I heard. And um, I'm not a gossip, I don't, like, I don't like getting involved in drama, but this is a really big deal. This was somebody's sacred marriage, you know? And I said, this is what our friend told us. And she said, that's not the truth. It's not the truth at all. And it, it ended up being a huge fight, huge big deal. She lied. Um, I didn't handle myself well because I don't lie. And we all went out afterwards and um, we were all, they, the girls went to the bathroom and they were in there for a very long time. And I thought, I wonder what's going on. We just got a, we just got a green heron totem right there. So this is the night heron. So this is coming from the night, okay? The night heron only comes out usually in the, in the early morning or, or, or right before dusk. So this is the hidden truths coming to, to, coming to light. That's what it means. Um, the green heron, interesting, and it's green, so that's for healing in your heart chakra. So they were in there far too long, and I knew something wasn't right. I just knew something wasn't right, and I went in there, and I said, what's going on? And Denise, my friend, said, she said, well, this is what Sherry told me, and she said it in front of the, in, in my other friend, and my friend denied it. She lied, and she, had, she kept a completely straight face. Now, this is why we don't want to lose our cool. This is why we don't want to get hot under the collar. I was so angry, first of all, that it was a lie. Second of all, that she, now she's calling me a liar, right? And I, and I lost it. I did. I lost it. I was young. I was like 16. And I said, you're a liar. And I, and I, and I started yelling, and, I was, and she just kept her composure. She was so calm. She was the biggest manipulating, lying girl. I could not get over how I was so innocent and naive. And she played me, and I looked like the one that was causing trouble. And it broke up the friendship. Um, her and I have never spoken again, and uh, ever. And um, my other friends kind of, we started to drift apart. And I, I would still try and reach out to them, but it wasn't the same ever, you know? And years and years and years went by later. Years, like 10 years went by. And my friend that, that I, that, who, who was gossiped about, who, who, was, who had the lie told about, she, um, she contacted me and I said, you know, it's always bothered me. You know, I said, you know me. You know me. I said, why? It, it just bothered me that you would believe her over me. And she said, I never believed her. I always knew she was lying. I never believed her. She goes, I know that you don't lie. And I said, why didn't you say something? And she goes, I just didn't want to deal with the drama. She goes, I just wanted it to stop. She goes, but I've always believed you. And here all these years, because I should have gone to her. I should have gone to her and said, is this how you feel? Is this the truth? You know what? Because I feel this uncomfortable feeling. 10 years I let go by and I was tortured by it. So all of this is coming out for a reason. There's something that needs to be said or there's something that has been said and you may have believed it or you may not have confronted it, but you need to, it, I was not wrong to speak my truth. I wasn't wrong to go to my friend and tell her the truth. I did this with my friend, with my twin soul. I told him something that I don't, I didn't think he ever believed, but now I'm getting this message. Maybe he did believe me. Maybe he did trust me. I just, I don't know because I haven't seen him, but it's the same kind of situation. For many, many years, I've felt bad. Not, not that I told him I would do it again. I said, I would rather be, have you angry at me than have you hurt by anyone. And that's what it was with my friend Denise. I would rather have her angry at me for bringing this up than, than have this go around about her. That was my friend. I'm loyal to my friends. But it also brings up a, a, what we've gotten in our reading before, that sometimes telling the truth in the short run is painful because you're going to be punished for telling your truth. But in the long run, you'll be glad that you did because it'll come back around. Now, unfortunately for me, it took 10 years because I didn't bother going and addressing my friend. I just assumed that she was angry at me when, I, when she never was. And I allowed our friendship to drift. I was never angry. She was never angry at me and I loved her, you know? So don't hold back, but don't lose your cool. When you're going to confront somebody and if they lie, let that be their karma because when you lose your cool, you look like you're, why are you getting so upset if you haven't, if it isn't the truth, right? That's why I did, I chose not to retaliate to this stalker garbage that I was dealing with because if I got all hysterical and hot and bothered by it, why would I do that if it, if it wasn't somehow the truth? Because it isn't the truth, so I'm not giving it any energy. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So keep your cool. Um, hold your ground, speak your truth. And if you have that weird feeling about somebody, this is confirmation that you were right. And um, don't let time go by 
wondering if there's been a misunderstanding, if there's something that you can clear up, clear it up. Wow, we're at almost an hour and we've only had two cards. But these messages have, we've been, we've been getting these messages in different ways for quite a while. So I feel it's important. All right, so let me take another swig of my chia water. Hope you guys are having a beautiful day. A relaxing Sunday, wherever you are. I hope you enjoy this beautiful view. Let me put you this way. Maybe, maybe it's prettier straight ahead. While I'm getting a drink of water here, I'm going to also say to you, let you guys have a look around. I'm going to stretch and I'm going to say, if anybody is interested in having a private reading, purchasing a Queen of Wands ceremonial cleansing, blessing, and saging wand that is enhanced with a Reiki charge crystal, or would like help with dream analysis or life coaching, my website is www.theangelswhisper.com. And my email address is Sherry Columbus, S H E R R I C O L U M B U S, at yahoo.com. I would be honored. I also make Merlin the Magician's magical healing meditational tools, the Avian Crystal Cone, which is a pine cone that has many different um, of the bird messenger feathers attached to it, along with several different Reiki charged crystals. It's an excellent meditation tool that helps take you to the astral planes. It helps take you into the forest. You're getting the healing energy of all of the crystals attached to it. Amazing meditation tool. My girlfriend um, told me that she was sitting with her, hers the other day and she said she, she it took her to the forest and she felt incredibly connected. She said it, 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 she, she was connecting with all of the energy of the crystals and found it very, very, not only peaceful, but very powerful. So there's testimony right there for somebody who's already using one. I also make crystal clusters, um, different types of crystals that you would lump together for different purposes that you need. Addiction, business, soulmate, connection, love, um, healing, endurance, money matters, whatever, right? So if I can help you with any of those things, I'd be honored. Please do like and share these videos for as many people as possible so that the word gets around, that spirit's message gets out to as many people as possible. And you can... Um, Subscribe to these videos on YouTube and you'll get all the videos and you'll get notified so you don't have to go searching for them because I have a lot of people writing saying, you know, you're not sending the videos anymore and I'm not seeing them in the feed. Well, go and subscribe. Everybody can subscribe, right? I got to get dehydrated. We need to get hydrated. Wow, I was thirsty. This is how we hydrate. This is, these cards, this is spiritual hydration. So, do subscribe. Okay, here's our next message. Correct the neutrality on all levels. I think what I'm going to do is, it's getting warm in this sector, in this little sector. So, I'm going to pick us up, and I'm going to move us over here. I kind of like having a different view anyway, you know. I'll let you, let you guys have a different view of things. We'll see what different messengers come. Oh, yeah, I like it up here. So now I can use my fish to hold up our cards. And I can I could even put this down. Let me see if that actually No, it's kind of dark, so I'll have to That's a bummer. Let's put it out like that while I shuffle our cards, okay? All right. So correct for neutrality on all levels. What is the next and most important message for us to hear? Actually, I think that's really loud on you guys. I'll do it on the other, other table. I'm gonna get these really good and shuffled because I was, I did these, I did them last night for myself. And I got three cards that I have not gotten. And I thought, really? Every time I do this for the for the soul family, we keep getting repetition. Why can't we get a new card? I guess because we haven't gotten it, right? We haven't gotten the message that we need to get. So it's got to be repeated. We're missing something. All right, here we go. I like standing. <laughs> okay. 
Ooh, I thought another was going to drop, but it didn't. Oh my God. I'm not going to go into this one long. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, because we literally just got it. Tiger Angel. Oh my God. I, I mean, I just can't because, you know, I'm not even going to because we got this last week. So I'm, I'm not. While, while I shuffle, while I shuffle again, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Spirit, why, why did we get this one again? Well, four, the number four, here, I'll let you look at it and, and if you can. I'll, I'll turn it this way. I wonder if you can see it if I, while I shuffle. Can you see the card? There you go, right on. Okay, so while I'm shuffling this, okay, so first of all, I guess would be the number four. That means that the angels are with you. They're all around you. You're every, they're all around you everywhere, completely guided, protected, and loved, okay? Um, and the tiger's talking about strength and nurturing. And basically what they're asking you, and this is probably for me, that's probably why it came out. And I'm not gonna send my little boy off into the drink, so don't worry, but this is about reaching out and helping animals and helping people and having an, an, an invisible influence. And this is the invisible influence, right? The work that we do, sometimes it isn't seen. As I said, sometimes what we do isn't appreciated at first. And you know, like I said, speaking out ended up hurting me and it felt like it was, and so maybe you have to, to do something um, for somebody else that they're not aware of. That, that, that you know, And maybe what you have done you feel has been not observed but but this is about doing it for the right reasons it's not about doing it for for recognition right it's about doing something doing a kindness or reaching out um to others without seeking a thanks this is about like anonymous gifting or, you know just 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 basically doing your job because you know it's the right thing to do right get paid for this work that I do this is my path and I know I do it because I'm, I'm it's the right thing to do so that's kind of what the tiger angel is talking about so let's get another one because we just had that one right all right we have a one that we haven't had okay I'm excited I'm excited okay hold on turn this around so that <laughs> lord I hope I don't run out of battery because I'm taking so long here this one's cool Okay, come on. Move things out of the way. It's all set up. <sighs> this is when an assistant comes in handy. You know, the one that I don't have. <laughs> okay, the divine disguise. Can you guys see her? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do what I did before. I'll do it this way. Just remember. There, you can see her, right? Look at her cool mask. That's pretty cool. So, what she's showing you is, okay, so there's a disguise. She's, she's disguised, you can't see much of her. She's pretty much hidden. So, this is talking about blessings. And they're telling you that some blessings are obvious, right? But some are not. Some are, she, she's, she, you can't, you can't recognize who this one is. You don't see who this is. You're not able to see what's behind this mask or what's behind this beautiful exterior of this creation that's there. It's a veil of, of sorts. So what's going on right now is there is a sacred blessing coming to you. It's either coming to you or oh, look who's there. The night heron is coming to you. In the daytime, do you see him walking along? Oh my gosh, you guys. If he starts walking across that wire, that's pretty freaking cool. Is he gonna catch a fish right in front of us? Because what it's talking about is there's a blessing in your life right now or about to appear in your life. Can you see him? See him? He just lifted his head. Oh, I'm gonna make him fly. So that's the night hair. That would, that would look like a blue heron, but I think it's, it's actually a green heron, even though it looked blue. Um, but right when I said that, he showed up. And all the noise, all the noise. So there is a blessing that's working its way into your life or it's, it's, a, it's about to, and it's concealed. So what Spirit's telling you is they don't want you to worry about things looking like they're not working out, looking like things are looking bad. You know, that might be, you know, the, um, 
all the people naysaying and, and telling you you're crazy to follow this dream or believe in this thing because you don't see what's about to happen, but there's some beautiful blessing on its way that's disguised. And as soon as the disguise is dropped, all of a sudden the blessing is going to be obvious. So it's basically the universe is telling you, we know what you need. We know what's, we, we can see things from a higher perspective. Like, like the red hog goes up to spirit. We can see things. That seagull can see a lot more of what's going on down here than I can, right? Because he's up above. Well, spirit's up above and able to look in and behind closed doors and see things that we aren't able to see. And spirit's telling you right now, there's something amazing coming to you and you think that this is what you need. You think this is what you want, but spirit says, sometimes you don't know what is in your highest good. That's why we say to spirit, I want this or something better. Him or something, someone better. Her or someone, something, someone better, right? I want this situation. Spirit asks us to make a move and take action steps, but remember they've always also said to us that don't, don't put spirit in a box and remain flexible and adaptable because you may have to be course corrected, right? So Spirit's saying that right now, what's coming to you, it might not be what you're thinking. And maybe the blessing is the challenge. Remember I said this whole thing that we're going through with Prince, there's a reason that this is happening. I got that from Spirit before. Things are delayed for you, but it's a blessing in disguise. You'll soon understand why this happened as it did. And then I said to you, I know that if I wasn't living here, if I wouldn't have been able to save that cat. I needed to stay here in order for that to happen, right? That served a purpose, the delay of what me moving forward. There goes the great heron again. God, they're so graceful and amazing. And so for you, this blessing that comes to you might come in the form of you losing a job. You're having to move. My girlfriend, uh, Christina, she had to move out of her house and she was panicking. She has two kids in high school and she had a, has a big dog and she's like, I don't know where I'm going to go. What am I going to do? It was not convenient. She asked the landlord if she could have more time and the landlord said, no, you got to go. And it was, it was really scary. And, she, and I said, you know, it's happening for a reason. Even though it feels scary, I've been in that same situation before and it always works out for the better. And what ended up happening was her dad comes raising in, racing into the rescue and says, you know what? I'm going to buy a property and build a house for you. She got her own place that she will never be evicted from. She can pick out and help figure out how it's going to be done. Kids go to school. I mean, she lost her place, was being kicked out and got something better. So for you, something's coming that may come across that you may not understand, but it is a positive message and peace of mind is going to come to you. So the situation isn't obvious to you. It, it isn't obvious to you because right now you're stressing about something right now. You want this to happen and you're not seeing it happen. But what they're saying is the delay is happening on purpose. Just like Spirit said to me, that there is a delay, but there's a blessing in disguise. You'll understand it when it happens. Right now, while you're going through it, it's not fun. But we're here to tell you that this delay is happening on purpose. This challenge, whatever this is, this job loss, even this sickness happened in order, you had to be in bed. You had to be there in order for this to happen, in order to meet that person, in order for this thing to happen. Spirit knows how to align things up. We don't know how spirit works. We don't know. We've seen it work in, in, in magical ways before. So spirit's asking you to trust it this time. Whatever it is, even if what you're sure of, even if what you think you need fails. It could be, it's like, when spirit slams the door on you, don't try and kick it open because that no caused you to do something different, which caused that person to say yes. You weren't supposed to have anything to do with the one who said no. You could have maybe worked it out, but it wouldn't have been good. But now that you've gone to this person, it's going to be amazing. The no for that one is the yes for the one that you needed. Okay. So the failed relationship was the opportunity for the relationship of your dreams. The failing career path that you were taking opened up a whole new career path because you were desperate and you went and you and you had to do something and so you took this and you connected with this person and then you started working on this project and all of a sudden it was like oh my god I love this this is what I want to do I've always wanted to do this and I've I never knew I would meet up with somebody like this but spirit did right so don't be so quick to judge because there's a hidden blessing and you're going to realize how loved and helped that you are how loved spirit by spirit you are how helped you are about to be. I've had so many of my soul family come to my aid. It's been amazing, right? 
So it's, it's going to be better than what you think. And what appears to be most difficult for you right now is actually going to show, show you that things are going to be turning around. It's actually, it appears to be going, working against you, but it's actually going to be revealed that it's working for you. That's what it is. It's the opposite of what it appears right now. So the message, right? Things are not always as they seem. So we don't want the mask, though, right? So let's ask Spirit to remove the mask. We will say, the universe in all of its grace removes the mask and reveals its face shining down with love for me, helping me become all that I can be. And then let's look up and visualize the universe looking down at us. Feel it looking down at us. Feel the love coming down. Feel the light shining and, and imagine that is the person that you love the very most, smiling beams of light at you. Feel the effect of that. The, how do you feel when the one you love the most shoots the biggest smile at you? You feel that love and that warmth, and it relaxes you, doesn't it? So whatever appears to be, the truth revealed is always love helping me. Okay, I, I'm hoping that we have enough battery for one more message. Um, we're, we're way past an hour right now. But I, I, and if we don't, I've already said my, I'll say my goodbyes now, and I love you guys, and I hope you have a great rest of the Sunday. But... Let's ask Spirit if we can squeak out one more one more message, okay? I gotta take a drink of my chia water. Hold on. I'm really dehydrated. I need some loving in my life. I need some loving, babe. Emotional dehydration. I was just thinking, I miss my soul family. Somebody posted a um a picture of daffodils starting to spring up in Wisconsin. And they they were hit by that major snowstorm, right? And I posted it and I said, the daffodils are coming up, Uncle Phil, Mama Sherry. I dreamed with my Auntie Beth last night. She's my surrogate aunt in Wisconsin. And I thought, dang, I miss my family. I need some loving in my life. Correct neutrality on all levels. One last card, here we go. I don't think, oh, we have, I've, I've, I've read for somebody else with this card, but you guys haven't had it. But I dig on the color, big time. Turn it around. Now, can you see her? Let's see. The Silver Siren. Okay, silver. I love silver. Love silver. And her blue eyes. Now, she looks awfully cold, doesn't she? Hmm. The Silver Siren. She looks cold. I'm looking at her like the ice princess or the ice queen. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't like her eyes. She's got like a dead look to her eyes. She reminds me of that, of that shiny queen that knocked over the, the dark queen, you know, the shiny benevolent facade. That's what she looks like to me, a siren. So, enchantment. So, this is someone that promises an, a lot and delivers very little. False promises. She's a siren that sings a pretty poison. Her song is poison. She tempts you. She tempts your mind. She tempts your heart. You know something's not right. You know. You know something is not right. Don't allow her false promises to touch your heart. So this is this is a shiny benevolent facade. This is what I've spoken about quite a bit. This is false light. This is somebody who's coming at you like they're coming from the light and they're not. She's misleading. This is the opportunity that spirit does not want you to take. This is the one that's toxic. This is seduction, a promise of what it is that you Basically, you can't have this unless you compromise your integrity. This is a lesson that you don't want to learn. It's, 
If you compromise your integrity to have what she's offering, the price is not going to be worth it in the end. She's going to take a part of your soul. Look at her. She has no emotion. She's telling you, you have the strength within you, and you have the integrity within you to say no to something that's going to come along and try and tempt you. It's going to look really good. They're going to know, they're going to know what to throw in front of you. But you know. Remember that, that message before? You knew something wasn't right. You know better. If you take what she's offering, if you take a bite of that rotten apple, that poisoned apple, this is going to be attacking your own personal integrity. It will destroy your own self-esteem. This is about, this is, she's, she, this is the manipulator. This is the one who, this is the narcissist. This is the narcissist and, and they come across and they offer you everything. And they're, and they're charming and they're flattering and they're beautiful and they're sexy and they're handsome and, they're, and, and this offer, whatever this offer is, that they, it, it's the most amazing offer. It sounds too good to be true because it is too good to be true. Because this is the kind of person that's gonna suck your life's blood out or the project or the idea or whatever this is. It's, it's asking you to compromise who you are, your integrity, um, your honor. And once you've done that already, they've got their clutches into you. And then they turn. This is the narcissistic one that turns around and then it feeds on you and sucks every lifeblood of this. This one is cold as ice. Spirit is telling you, do not go to this false light. Pay attention to what your higher self is telling you. Stay true to your heart no matter what. No matter how much you fear. Even if this person tells you that they're coming from the light. Even if this person says that they are a spiritual person, you know there's something that's not right. Trust what your heart is telling you. This is the warning that Spirit's been giving us for, for months, for months. This is the one that you are to be aware of. You already have the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. Speak your truth. Even if you fear that you're gonna be cast aside, all intents and purposes, this person is enlightened and, they, and what they want you to do is only in your highest good. This opportunity is way too good to miss. Look at all, the, look at all of this that I've gotten. They'll come to you. This is the kind of person that's going to come to you in this, in this really expensive car, in this really expensive outfit, in this really expensive watch and say, you know, this is the project that this will bring you all of this if you join in. You find out that that's a fake Rolex. That car is rented. They don't own anything. Everything they have is mortgaged to the hilt. They want you because what they, have, what, what they need is you. You have what they need. You are the white crane who has done the work. You've seen the opportunity. You've grabbed the opportunity and you've been able to make something out of it and they're gonna now try and make a buck on you. But they're gonna tell you that this is in your highest good. They want you to come in, but what they want is what you have. So there's gonna be an offer coming and you need to be aware. When this siren sings your song, you're being given an opportunity, but you're given an opportunity, all right. You're giving an opportunity to trust yourself and not her. You're, giving, you're being given an opportunity to speak your truth, stand in your integrity, remain in your own honor, trust in your own highest self, know that you have the ability to do this, and you're not going to fall for this bullshit that this one is spewing. Use your powers of imagination to see through this fake light and know that beautiful facade that smiles at you. You feel loved by, you feel heard by, you feel protected by, but you know that you're not. You need to go to the true light. You need to go to the divine masculine. You need to go where, where there is love, where there is kindness, where there is truth, where there is understanding. You stay away from ridicule, blame, um, judgment. This, this one, one minute is all charming and lovely, but when you don't do what they want you to do, they rip your face off. They, they cut you down. They make you feel bad about yourself. You're not good enough. If you don't have what they have, if you're not with them, if you don't go with them, you won't succeed. That already should tell you. Right? It should be pretty clear. You go where you feel loved, where you feel blessed, where you have seen and heard love. And you've, you've seen proof of it before. You've seen this one walk their walk and talk their talk. This one doesn't walk their walk and talk their talk. This one's riding on the back. So you say to yourself, I recognize the truth behind the light. My heart instinctively recognizes what is right. I know. I know better. And if I need to get outside and clear my head, you don't have to make a decision, whatever this was being offered to you. You don't have to make a decision right now. Take your time. Sit back. Sometimes we get all whipped up. Sometimes something looks really, really good, right? Sometimes we get all whipped up and we have to ask ourselves, 
What should we do? We have to ask Spirit what we should do. And oh my God, I think the Osprey's back. He's right there. Wow, that's pretty freaking cool. So his message is, I'm not gonna lose my mind like I did the last 300 times I've done this because my, my battery's about to die. The Osprey says important information is pending. You will be able to dive down deep under your emotional waters and you will be able to succeed. You'll pop back up. You will, you have that ability. The Osprey also knows how to dive on an opportunity and grasp it. The, Os the Osprey also says, there's an opportunity here for you. The door won't be open long, act. But remember, there's two. We just were, got, were shown again. There's something blessed, a blessed event coming that looks like it may not be, but there's this one that's gonna come across all sweetness and light. And this is an ice queen. This is the queen that's gotta go. All right, you guys, you hear all that? You hear all that confirmation? That's the queen that's gotta go. The lion queen, the one that makes themselves look like this. Could be a female queen or a male queen, who knows? There's all kind of queens out there, but this is a wicked one. We don't want this one. We want the one in the light. All right, you guys, that's it. So take one more sweep of the lake. Thank you for joining me. <sighs> Taking a deep breath in, relax. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. <laughs> There's a lot of talk going on. Interesting. Interesting. Those two white birds shining in the light, nattering, nattering, nattering. So they may appear. There it is. Somebody that might appear to be in the light, and they're not. I, I always say, you know what? Who is walking their walk and talking their talk? That, that should tell you. you. Just, you know, put your money where your mouth is, basically. Don't just give me all this. I just keep thinking, um, used car salesmen or, um, what is that? Um, Multi-level marketing bullshit. No thanks, don't even bother coming to me. I'll never go there, but that's what it makes me think of. All right, you guys, have a fantastic day. We will talk soon. I'll go upload this as soon as I can. It'd be a really good idea to spend at least 10 minutes in the sun today. It's very healing, it's very powerful. Allow it to fill your core. Burn off anything inside, any worry, fear, doubt, anger, upset, confusion. Fill your whole entire insides. As it rises up above and spills over to the top, all around the outside, it falls down like a volcano eruption going all down the sides of you. And as it falls down the sides, the wind is cooling it and it turns to a solid titanium shield armor plating all around the outside. And then we ask for a mirrored sheeting to go around that. We are fully protected on the outside as well as the inside. Everything on the outside has been burned off that's come against our armor and we've been replated as well as what's inside. And now we can relax. And now we can listen to what the truth is. And we can hear spirit for what it is, the truth of it. And we can see the truth of what's in front of us. We aren't going to be misled. We aren't going to be sucked in by the shiny benevolent facade. We're going to recognize the truth. Yes, we are. And we're going to have trust and faith in our own abilities and our own ability to discern the truth. All right, you guys. I love you. Have a great day.